Hi, this is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. We're going to be taking a look at a special technique using both Photoshop and After Effects. It's going to be a little bit of motion control, and what we're going to do is replace the sky in a photo, then use a 3D camera to create interest within the scene. Let's see how. I'm going to start off over in Photoshop and begin with a simple picture of an outdoor area. Now, let's just grab a couple of these JPEGs here. And I'll open all three of these up. Now, what we'll do here is replace the sky with a cloudy sky that we're going to animate. The first thing we need to do is remove the blue sky. I'll go ahead and make this a layer by double clicking. And then I'll choose Select Color Range. I can now click on the sky and then hold down the Shift key to drag through and select a wider area. Notice it indicates what we're picking up. That looks pretty good there. And I'll go ahead and click Invert and then click OK. And once I have a good selection, I'll click the button to add a layer mask and that's all set. Notice we have a little bit of blue fringe here. This is an excellent opportunity to take advantage of a new feature in CS4, and that is the Masks panel. This allows us to refine the mask attached to a layer without having to delete it and start over. So with the mask selected, I'll just click on Masks for the panel, and I can go ahead and click on the Mask Edge. I'll go ahead and put this over white so I can better see the blue fringe there. And what I'm going to do is play with the contract and expand. I'm going to go ahead and contract that a few pixels and feather it just a bit. And that's looking better. There we go. And we'll click OK. Now we're replacing that with a blue sky. So a little bit of blue fringe on the rocks is OK because it's really just the blue sky reflecting on that surface. So this one's all set. Let's quickly prep the other two images. I'll go ahead and save this. And what I need here is a Photoshop document. I'll save that as a PSD and click OK. And that's all set. Let's go ahead and close that and go to the next image. Double click to make it a layer. We'll name it. Choose Select Color Range. In this case, I'm going to uncheck the Localize Color Clusters option and click on the sky. Hold down the Shift key and drag through to pick up more of the sky. That's looking pretty good. And click OK. That looks good. We'll click the layer mask button. That's all set. Save and close. And we'll do the last file here. Double click to make it a layer. Choose select color range. And start to click on the sky to get a selection. There we go. Make that a little fuzzier. Click OK and add the layer mask. So those all worked well. What we need to do now is actually create the composite image for a larger sky. Now there's lots of ways of doing this. One of my favorite techniques is to just shoot a lot of photos of the same sky. You can just take your digital camera and click and shoot off multiple exposures. Once you have those, you can merge those together using the photo merge technology, which is built into Photoshop CS2 or later. Here's how. I'm going to choose File Automate Photo Merge. And I'm going to do a reposition here, which will allow me to manually position these. And I'll choose my images and click Open and then OK. Notice that a couple of the pictures cleanly lined up together. These two pictures went together well, these two pictures went together well, but I have a lot of random pictures that I'm going to go ahead and put together manually. Not a big deal. We can go ahead and extend our canvas size a bit wider here, manually reposition these how we want them, and then stitch them. This is because when I took these pictures, I just randomly shot them off. If we did a little more methodical when we shot them, we could have actually turned at the waist and shot more of a series of sequential pictures but this will still work well. Let's go ahead to canvas size, and we're gonna go ahead and extend the canvas, make it a bit wider. All right, that's pretty good there, and let's build this up. 
There we go. Let's go ahead and grab this first picture here. These two are working well. So I'll go ahead and merge those, Command E. And we've got our next one here. We'll reposition that so it looks pretty good. That'll work. Turn on our next photo. And let's grab that. Go to our next image. And continue along here until we build some things up. These two went together well, so I'll merge those. And let's extend that going this way a bit. And one more picture. Now, those definitely don't line up perfectly, but what we can do now is select all those layers and choose Edit, Auto Blend. We'll tell this that it's a panorama and to go ahead and blend the tones and colors, and I'll click OK. It thinks for a little bit, and then it's going to create a gentle blend between those images. There we go. Did a pretty good job except for this last image here. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that one. And that one didn't seem to really fit in the piece there, so no big deal. Let's just drop that. And we'll drop that layer. That looks pretty good there. Go ahead and merge those. Select all our layers and Command E. I can Command click to load it and choose Image, Crop. That does a pretty good job. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just a quick scale. I'll take advantage of a new thing here in CS4 called Edit Content Aware Scale. And we'll scale that up. And what it does is a good job of resizing things without too much distortion. There we go. And that looks good. Let's just make that a little wider for balance. And that does it. Go ahead and press return to apply it. And there we have it, our clouds. Now, we've done all the Photoshop prep work. Be sure to join me next week when we take a look at part two, where we bring this all into After Effects and create an animation. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington. Be sure to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com. And for those of you who have the book, Photoshop for Video from Focal Press, there's a new update on CS4 coming out for free. Thanks again.